So the way this works is channel one or sun or starting address one is going to start right here on this fixture one or scanner one. So here, let me turn, reset the board, make it go, make everything go black again. So I believe I set this one to start at one. So, and I remember, I remember this light, the first channel is just a dimmer. So nothing's happened now. And the last four are my colors. It would help if I selected it. So I bring up the master dimmer. Now I should be able to bring up red, green, blue, and an individual white. So that's how I've got the first one going. Now the second, second one starts at 17, because each one of these takes up 16 channels. So the first one will start at one, the second one will start at 17, next one will start at 33. And you basically just keep adding 16 to each one of these to get where you want it to start. So if I go to two, I believe I've got this one set to two. So now I can see if I play around with the first one, it spins. Second one will make it tilt. The third one will act like a dimmer, so nothing's happening right now. But if I bring up the fourth one, I'll start getting red and green and blue and white. So same sort of thing, but again, as you can tell, it has different channels. The channels are arranged differently from light to light. So really a good idea to always keep your manual available when you're programming. Once you've got it programmed, it's set, and you can just basically mash buttons. But so the next one, which starts at 33, will go to this third one right here. Now I've got this set in five or seven channel. So I've got red, green, blue, but nothing's happening because I have a master dimmer on my four. So I can make a good, I can make a color I want, say make a purple, and then rather than bringing down the red and blue to make it dim, I can just bring down the dimmer. So once you've got it set where your lights are all working, um, you're able to control them this way, all that sort of stuff. There's a good way um, to test and make sure everything's working is to just turn your light board off Give it a second, turn it back on, basically puts it in blackout mode. You want no lights to be happening. Some lights out there, uh, Chave, American DJ, have a safety feature in them where if it doesn't see DMX, it will start making all of the lights do something because it thinks that the board lost power and now your stage is completely dark. And in the middle of a show, nobody wants that. So they do have a safety feature in there to make the, all of these lights would start doing something. I don't have one of those here. So when the board is off, well, maybe they will. Yeah, like that. So the board's off, they start producing light, but it's chaotic, lets you know if something's gone wrong, you need to fix it, but at least you can see in the stage or stage or what have you has not gone completely dark. So that's a good idea to power the board on. Don't mess with anything. Let it come up and make sure everything's black. Nothing is, nothing is freaking out. Nothing's wigging out. Now we're good. Now we can program. Programming on this board is fairly easy. Um, what we do, we're going to go into program mode. I'm just going to hold this program button until this little tiny LED starts flashing. Now I'm going to make it all you basically do is go through and make each scene look how you want it to look. So right now I want all of them to do red. So I'm going to go through individually and make them do red. Hold on, that one's still up. Red. Go to the next fixture. I'm going to spin that around so we can see it. Red. Red. Now. Now that I've got the look I want, I'm going to save it to these scenes up here. Now you have eight scenes with 30 banks of those scenes. So 
you can have, well, I can't do the math on that right now, but um, yeah, 30 banks of eight scenes. So it works out pretty, you've got a lot of options of how much stuff you can save. So I wanna save this one to scene one in bank one. I'm gonna hit add and then hit the scene I wanna save it to. The board will, all the lights will flash on the board letting me know it saved it. Now if I hit two, they all go dark. If I go back to one, now that's saved it. So I want to keep that position because you can see how it moves. I don't want that position to change for my next one where I'm going to make all the colors do green. So I'm going to leave it in this mode where you're seeing all the red and I'm just going to go through and change the colors to green. Not changing the position of how the light is tilting or anything like that. And now, again, add, and I'm going to save that to two. Same thing I'm going to do, but just now with blue. Add, save to scene three. Now, now I've got those three saved and I can mash through buttons. Now, let's say I want to make some more stuff where this moves around and all the colors start doing something different. I'm gonna go to an, the next bank. I'm gonna go to bank two, which is all completely empty, nothing on it. I'm going to say, I want this one to do purple, pink, whatever. I'm gonna have this one this is the mover. I'm going to have it pointed there and make it do just white. I'm going to have the first one do a teal. How about let's, let's just do teal. Now, save that. Hit add. Save to scene. I'm going to take this guy, spin it around somewhere. Let's point it right back in my face. How about that? Change some colors. Just make that one red. And we'll just make that one blue. Save to two. So on and so forth. You just keep programming till you programs that you like and get it the way you want it to look. And once you get enough of them programmed, I can exit the program mode. It will throw it in blackout mode after you exit program, so you just have to hit blackout. Now, I can go through manually and push each one of these buttons and do it that way. Or, I have two options. I can set it to auto, which will allow me to move this slider up here and control how fast it's going to go through each one of those. So it's literally just pushing the one, two, and three, the three that I've programmed into this bank, it's just gonna go through those. I can change the fade with this next slider and make it seem, you know, seamlessly go from one to the next, flow evenly. I can even make it go slower, start getting a crazy effect, considering how fast I can make these go. It gets pretty neat. Now, the other mode is sound mode. So if I push sound mode, it's going to go off me talking, apparently, or anytime something hits this. So if you've got a bunch of bass or something like that, it will trigger it again to just go to the next one. So sound mode is cool. We don't have a whole lot of noise, really, to make it do that. So I'm going to get it to just slowly scroll. There is a tap down here if you want to use a tap. Does the same function. Now, it's just scrolling through that first bank. If I push the bank up, it'll go to the next one and still do the same thing and just go through those three things that I have programmed in there. Which is pretty cool, pretty easy. Um, you can usually have a bank 
like I have here where it's just simple scrolling through colors. I get it to go. There we go. And then go to the next one and have it again be the crazy thing where now it's all moving around and the lights are going crazy. And now I can just go back to the simple color fading. You can rock back and forth between those. And like I said, you've got 30 banks to program. So you have quite a lot of options on how many different movements, color changes, whole scenes you want. These, almost, these banks will almost work like Chase as well. But you also have six chases on top of it. So what a chase is, is <coughs> will, it will, it's a mix of any of these. If I wanted to take all of these six things that I've programmed in there and make it into one chase, or take one from this bank, one from this bank, one from this bank, one from this bank, and put it all into a chase so that I don't have one programmed yet, but when I hit the button, it goes to just that. Overrides what I'm doing up here and just goes to what I have the chases programmed. Works really cool if you, uh, do a, if you want to have something that does strobes, because um, all of these lights will strobe. So let's, if you want to have something that does strobing, but you don't want it to accidentally kick on. You know, some people have problems with that epilepsy and all that. You don't necessarily want that to just be every, every third time this rotates, suddenly it starts strobing, someone's complaining. So you want that to be controllable sometimes. So that's where I'll put it on a chase, but really you can put anything on a chase. Um, let's program a chase. I'm in program mode. Now I'm gonna turn on the chase. And I can see here, I've got a little one that shows me I'm in chase one. I can select any chase I want. I'm gonna start with one. So I pr pick the scene I like. We're gonna start with blue. And I'm just going to push add and add again. Now I'm gonna go find one of these scenes Push add and add again. Now push another random one. And I'll go back to the simple one. Just do green. Now, I should have saved the chase. Let's see if it did. So this is, let's put it back in auto mode. So they're scrolling through, doing their thing, just doing the color scrolling. Now if I push chase one, there we go. Now it's going to go to whatever whatever scenes I had programmed in Chase 1. So it'll do the colors, it'll do this random rotate thing. If I had some strobes going, whatever you had programmed, it'll play that. And same thing, I can set it to music. And it'll scroll through it. It's really pretty simple to, to program, program one of these boards. It's just all about spending the time and knowing what your chan what your light is, how many channels it takes up, and what each one of those channels does. So each light will have a varying amount of, of possibilities. This light here will do seven ch or uh, will do nine channels or fourteen. I've got it in the nine channel mode because it's simpler. The fourteen channel mode works basically the same way, but with more options. So right now. As I was showing, oh, I'm in blackout. Right now, this light, let's turn all this off. Yep. So right now, this light is in nine channel mode. So the first channel does the rotate, second channel does the tilt, third channel works as a dimmer. Here. Third channel works as a dimmer until about halfway, and then it starts strobing. And the more I go up, the faster it goes. Until you get to the very top and it's just full blast. Then I just have my normal colors, red, green, ah, blue, and white. This number eight works as a speed. So if I turn this up, get some color going, if I throw this all the way up and try and spin it, it's going to go very, very slowly. I can bring this down and make it go faster. Or bring it all the way down and have it go at full speed. But if you wanted to have a nice scene where 
The light slowly starts panning from one direction to another. You can do it just with this fader here, not relying on how you have it programmed. You can override any of your programs by turning on the fixture and messing with the light. So let's say I've got, let's get the colors going again. There we go. So I got my colors going. Turn the chase off. There we go. All right, got my colors going. That's gonna go back to where I had it. Now I can override this and start making this move around. You can do this on the fly as you know shows going on, bands playing, what what have you, and that can give a nice effect with minimal effort. Colors are taken care of by the tap tempo. I'm the one manually moving the lights. And that works with really any of these. If I wanted to go through and change the colors on the fly, I could. It's, let's see which one I'm on. That's the mover. Yeah. It's hard to do it upside down and backwards, but I could manually mix the colors, what have you. If you, you know, if you have a bunch of those, it looks pretty cool, all that sort of stuff. So that works the same way though. If I go to this, again, upside down and backwards. If I go to this one and it's moving around as quickly as it can, if I go to fixture two, this, one, this guy, and bring up this last one, now that's gonna go slow. So, now, the difference between the 14 channels and the 9 channels is that the 14 gives me way more options. Instead of just having 2 to do movement, I have 4. If I switch this over, it's going to mess up my programming, but it'll be okay. Alright, now I'm in 14 channel mode. I think it's going to do a reset. So, let's see here. That's going to take up a lot more channels. Just want to make sure everything's zeroed out. So, my first one is only moving it just a tiny bit and rather slowly. Yeah, I don't know why it's going so slow at the moment. I haven't found that fit. There we go. There we got it. All right. So the first one is going to move it just like the other one would. The second one is going to move it in very fine detail. So I have this first fader to get me close to where I want it to go. I want it to point like at over there. Now that's close, but I can now use this guy to really get it where I want. Third channel, we'll do the same thing with the tilt. It's, it's, my, made, it's my big movement. Get it kind of where I want, and now I can use the next one to just make slight adjustments. I don't remember. I think the next one is the speed. Yep. And then one after that is same just as before. I've got one fader for a dimmer and strobe. Red, green. If I go over to the next page, blue, white. And now I have some auto modes. This is uh, macros, so it's predetermined colors that you can just scroll through rather than trying to combine your own colors. You just push a button and scroll through them. Then I believe there's an auto mode where it will just do movement, do colors, do all the stuff on its own. That's neat if you just need something to move around and and go without having to program the board and you just need to make lights happen now. Turn all that stuff off and I'm going to set this back to Yep. 
always a good idea to keep the owner's manual with you. It's very, very useful on all of these lights. Um, this one right here, this will do three different modes. It'll do three, three channel, which is just red, green, blue, five channel, which is red, green, blue with a master dimmer and a strobe and seven channel, which is the same as five, but now it's added the macro like the other one has and uh, an auto. So there's, depending on how high you have this set, I believe I actually have it in seven channel mode. Wrong. Uh, no, I'm in page two. So according to how high I have this set, it will do different functions. I think this one, this one right here is sound. If I bring it down a little bit, now it'll just start scroll slowly scrolling through the colors. And sometimes, yes, you can use, if you, if you have it set to this mode where it's slowly scrolling through colors, your strobe fader will actually work as a speed control. So now I can speed it up by throwing the strobe fader up and it'll go a little bit faster. Now, if I bring it down a little bit more, now it's gonna hard go through the colors. There's no tr smooth transition. And same thing, strobe will work as a speed control. Go a little bit less. I think that's it. I think that's it. So yeah, there's a, tons of different options. If I just wanted simple colors, that's a good way. I, I set it to three channel, call it a day. Um, if I want a whole lot of control and strobes and all of that, then you can set it to seven. If I just want some basic stuff, five channel works great. Now, what's neat about some of these are that if you have this set, let me change it to three channel mode. So now it takes nothing. It's just red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. <laughs> what I can do is I want that to line up with this, with the colors on this light which are over here on the other side of the board, which would be right here, right? Yeah. So I want my red, green, and blue from this light to line up with where they are here. So I've got it in fixture one, which starts at channel one, but the red needs to start at channel four. So I'm gonna set this to four. Channel four. All right. Now, if I turn on both fixtures, I'm going to get that wrong one. Turn on both fixtures. Did I not save it? Not save the. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, I know what I did. I've got these in the same spot. Hold on. I can't do math right now. 33. So now it should. Turn that off. There we go. So. Bring that up. Now they line up, which can make programming a lot easier. If you've got a lot of these and only a few of these and you want to just be able to set colors easily. So that one I've got started on fixture three. So it's starting at 33. Yep. Pushing this button will start these channels at 33, but I'm not using 33. I'm, I'm using 34, 35, 36. I'm starting this at 36 to make it line up with this guy. Mm 
Make sense? So you can get a lot of stuff to line up that way, and that can save a lot of time in programming. Um, another good thing to do, once you've got, probably should have said this earlier, but you know, we're learning as we go. Um, one thing that's good to do, once you've got everything hooked up, a DMX terminator at the end, especially for long runs, multiple lights, this will keep everything from, again, jittery and acting weird. Just on the last light where you have nothing else plugged in, that just goes right on the end. And that'll save you on a lot of time and hassle in the end. So, yeah, uh, any questions? Sometimes when I hook my, uh, I got an OV6. Yeah. I run it from the board to my first set of lights. The number one light, not all the time, but sometimes it flashes when nothing else is doing with it. Hmm. Yeah, that seems like that seems like a a DMX problem. Is there? A, are you you got DMX cable through everything? Yep. Another thing that can happen is power. Sometimes a um, low voltage can make those lights wig out. What's the power situation like? It's clean. Mm. Yeah, it's mm. right into the main wall. Okay, and not with a whole bunch of other ones daisy chained off of it as far as power goes. No. Okay. Okay. Um. So no, uh, board's basically in blackout. You haven't told the board to do anything and it just starts wigging out, right? Right. Now, have you gone through the settings on the light to make sure if it's yep. not so, what kind of light is it, you know? They're the PAR LEDs, like that little rail would do, but they're PAR lights. Okay. It's got the red, blue, green mm -hmm. lights in them. And I got, I got six of them that I wrote and only only one of them's having issues. And I got all six on the different. Mm. Okay, gotcha. Or so differently addressed. Do, yeah, yeah, yeah. They all do something they different. All do something different. Hmm. Um. The only thing I can think of is if there's something specifically wrong with that one light. If the power's good and the DMX is good and it's all DMX cabling and it's not again excessively long runs. Sounds like you don't have you know, you only have six, right? Yeah, I got six for the for the cars. Yeah. Okay. Well, how many lights are total in this running on this system? Uh, I got eight spots and six car lights. Okay. Maybe it's a maybe it's a DMX issue, and a splitter might take care of it. Because again, it's it, like I said, it's a 20 to 30, but that all changes depending on how long the runs are and how how many connections you've got in between it. Sometime, sometimes when you have a DMX issue, it's never going to be obvious as to which, you know, the one that's flashing might, need, might, might not be the one that's causing it. That's just the weakest link and that's where it started freaking out. But the problem might be somewhere else further down the line or somewhere ahead of it. My spots, I got a dimmer pack on them. Mm -hmm. With the terminator at the end, because that's my last set of lights. Yeah. Uh, what what kind of dimmer pack? Do you know? Uh, it's an older one. Okay. All right. It, it's not digital. It's the. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I um I would mess around with maybe see, uh taking off a light or two and see if that takes care of the problem, and then just reverse it from that. If you take off, take off the dimmer pack and find that now it's working great, maybe you might need a new dimmer pack. I've tried that too. Yeah. Still the same thing. Hmm. But I don't do it all the time. Yeah. I understand. And I used the shortest cable I got for however I'm set up to go from my box straight to my first set of lights. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. Um, because there's so many there's so many options without actually being there to see it, you know. I, it, it's it's hard to say, but yeah, I, I I would go I would go through, try bypassing lights, try removing, removing something from the power. Is it isolated power that all of the lights are on, or is there something else that might be tied off of it, like sound or something like that? Uh, no, I just got your basic plug. You know, that runs to the box and then... Uh, well, I'm saying as far as like that circuit, the, the power circuit, there's nothing, there's no sound or anything. 
like that outlet's tied to that outlet and anything like that? I, I mostly do most of my gigs in bars. Okay. So, and I try to throw out all the DO lights. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yep. yep. That'll, that'll give you problems and stuff, especially with the sound. Get you a lot of hum and all that kind of good stuff. Now, with that, uh, the wireless system, will that interfere with those? Typically not. Um, one of the one of the things of the wireless systems is that um, they all run at 2.4 gigahertz, which is fine. There's enough bandwidth and space for that there. But some of the places, uh, I mean, every place has Wi-Fi. If you start getting into some of these clubs and bars that are in a in a in a strip or whatever, and each place has Wi-Fi. It gets very crowded very quickly, and that can cause some issues sometimes. Same with some um, some of the lesser expensive wireless microphones, wireless uh, guitar, you know, guitar packs, and all that kind of stuff. Any of those that run at 2.4, 2.4 gig can start to get a little issues if you go into a place with a bunch of Wi-Fi and a bunch of Bluetooth and all kinds of stuff will start messing with it. It's po it's very possible. Okay. They work great when they work, but as soon as you start running into interference, it gets it gets a little tricky, and it's very hard to get rid of that interference because there's so much stuff that uses that. Yeah. Where my first set of lights go was in between the wireless sound for the XR18, mm -hmm. and then the bass player he carries a wireless okay for his face and so is the guitar okay and you and you are using the wireless for the lights or yeah, oh, okay okay i got gotcha. you they're using the wireless on their mm -hmm. it's po it's possible that could be interfering with it being so close, being so close um you know I, and again, if, it, if it's something like that where it's inter intermittent, it almost sounds like it could just be specifically a bad light or a bad cable or something like that. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell without me being there taking a look at it and going, doop, now that works, doop, now well, that works. Oh, here it is. But um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I would just try removing stuff until, until it stops doing that and then reverse engineer why why that worked that, that's my best option or be, best answer any, any more questions can you talk about like is that the the obvious stuff yeah the, the settings on the lights themselves oh well the, they all have different ones so like this one right here I can scroll through I can change how hold on let me get to the beginning just get to load Okay, so the first option normally is what starting address you want it to start at. Pretty typical. Um, now this one, all of these will pretty much have an auto mode where it will work without DMX. That's built into here. And it's all, again, all dependent from light to light. I believe this one is right here. I can set it to fast or a slow. Now it's, now it's in that mode. Let me turn it back to DMX. Okay. So, but that's how I can get to some of the auto modes built into it. I can reverse the pan or tilt on here. I hit pan, puts an R in front of it. Now it'll reverse that, depending on which way I want it to face, you know. Uh, same thing with the tilt, I can reverse the tilt. I can flip the display so that if it's hanging upside down, I can read it, yep. Which now I can read it, but you guys can't. Let me change that back. All right. And then I can switch between the different channel modes it has. Nine channel, 14 channel. Um, I can select how much I want this to rotate or how much I want it to tilt. Um, this will spin 540 degrees. I can make it spin for 540. I can make it spin it only at 360 or at 270, whatever the other one is. Um, same with the tilt, I can either have it tilt 180 degrees or just 120 or just 90. 
So it'll just do a 90 degree. So if I throw it all the way up, the most it'll go is straight up or straight down, depending on how you have it. <laughs> Same thing with some of these lights. I can scroll through, there's my addressing. I can set it to a master slave mode. And select how many channels I want to do. I can set it to a sound mode. Jump, which I can change the speed to. Fade. Auto, which is basically just the same thing as fade. Some of these, like, uh, I think they call it, yeah, they call it Nanu on this one. I can make my own color. And it's plugged in DMX, so it's just going to keep going back to DMX. But if I go, let's see here. If I go to Nanu, hit enter. I have R00, I can start bringing that up and mix my own colors straight from the light. So if you just wanted it to, if you didn't want to have to deal with DMX, you can make your own colors from that. And again, every light's going to be different. And every, every manufacturer makes their, makes it their own way. But yes. Yep. You want them to, like when you it mm -hmm. for RGB to match yep. The channel. Yep. Which you absolutely can do. Some boards, it's capable to actually reassign the faders on the board to make it line up. Um, so I could have this one have the first two channels move down to the end so that all the other channels could line up with it. Um, I don't think this one's capable of doing that, but a lot of the, a few of them are. And that's always an option. Um, yeah. Does that controller have a concept of a partial sync, or are they all under the They all five twelve. It's 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 all five five twelve. Yeah. Yep. No no multiple universes or anything like that. But yeah. Any, any more questions? What happens if you have more than one light on the same address? What they will just do the same thing. Okay. So you could absolutely have. As many as you want, just assigned to work all off this. They'll all be at this point red, and, and work the same way. Um, that's a very easy way to make a big lighting show out of not a whole lot of control. And so, if I already had the board set up to do off just this one, and I got a whole bunch more, just program them all to the same thing. Um, obviously, they're all going to do the same thing, <coughs> but. It's pretty easy after you get that and you already have something to go through and edit what you have. So if I added another light, go into program mode, and say I've got, I've got these all red, I can just add this one, make it match to whatever that is, color-wise, position, or change it completely, and then just add program. It's not going to delete what I had, it's just editing it re-adding it with how I've changed the scene. Which now has... Let's turn this thing off. Yep. Just saved it to red. So, yeah. So yeah, you can absolutely have as many of them set to the same channels as you want. And mix those around and all good, all kinds of good stuff. Yeah. I came late. What is the difference between the DMX cables and the XLR? So the DMX cable is wrapped different. It's data, it's data cable rather than low impedance uh, audio signal cable. Um, basically the same thing like a Cat5 or a Cat6, how the, the pairs are twisted together to give it a, a, a special sort of impedance. Um, these are normally 110 ohm, 120 ohm along the run. Um, it's, it, it gives it a wider bandwidth because it is just a digital signal going across it. Uh, in short runs like this, I could absolutely get away with uh, microphone cable, line cable. Yep, no problems. Uh, as soon as you start getting to like 10 lights or more, then you'll run into problems. If you have to run 50 feet or more, you'll get into problems. 
Um, so short runs, only a few lights. You can absolutely use mic cable. It's, it's not gonna harm anything, but as soon as you start hooking up more, they will start wigging out. You will have one of them, doesn't even have to be the last one, doesn't have to be the first one, but some point in the line, one of them will start flashing, start doing crazy stuff that you're not telling it to do. Like right now, if I unplug that one, unplug the board, what well, did it earlier? But either way, um, if it loses DMX, it'll, or if it start, if, if it's not getting the signal it needs to, and it's not in sync with the signal it needs to, it will start jittering, or a light will start flashing, or I turn the light on and it, one of them won't come on, and then start doing its own colors or wig, moving around and weird angles. All it just won't follow the control that you're telling it. Shorter runs, you're okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you had like one or two lights, you just needed to light up something quick and you were just gonna throw it up and throw the lights up, throw them on a, on a white wash or something like that to light up a stage, you'd probably be fine. You wouldn't have any issues. If you start hooking up a bunch of lights, long distances, you run into problems. Any, any more questions? Is the best to use a thick cable or a thinner? Uh, the thick cable's pretty good. Um, I mean, honestly, with this stuff, the, the, there's not really much shielding to it. It doesn't need it. Uh, so it's more about ruggedness as far as the thicker or thinner stuff. Thicker stuff's just going to last longer. You'll be able to take it down, wrap it up 100 times, and not have to worry about it. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, if you're taking them down and moving them around a whole lot, I would go with the thicker stuff. Especially. Because, yeah, that's that's one thing. This is fairly thin wire in here. And if it gets pinched or knocked around, it'll still work for a minute. And you still might get a connection, but you might be running some of the problems that you're having. Thing, things not uh, lining up like they should. So, yes, the thicker cables are better. Any more questions? All right. And we have any questions online or anything? Okay. All right. Thank you all for coming and doing this and shop at Parts Express. <laughs>